In this video, I'll explain the meaning of intermediate value theorem, which says if f is continuous on closed interval a to b and l is a number which is strictly between f of a and f of b, that means if these two conditions are true, then there must exist at least one number c which belongs to open interval a to b such that f of c equals to l. That means the value of the function at this point must be equal to l. So I'll explain it by one step at a time. Now it says f is a continuous function on the closed interval a to b. I'll make the graph x y axis let's say this is the point a and this is the point b now f is a continuous function in this interval that means f of a must be defined and it will be somewhere on the y axis and at point b that means f of b is also defined so I assumed that f of a is over here and f of b is over here. It can be anywhere on this y-axis. And these are the points on the graph. Now f is a continuous function. That means the curve of this function is continuous without any breaks, holes or jumps. So it can look like this. And the second condition is L is a number which is strictly between f of a and f of b. That means L will be somewhere here between f of a and between f of b. So let's say this is L. Then correspond to this L there must exist at least one number c which belongs to the open interval a to b such that the function is defined at this point and the value of the function is l that means if i draw a horizontal line correspond to this l at this point there is a point c on x-axis such that f of c must be equal to L. This is what an intermediate value theorem states. That means if these two conditions are true, then there must exist a point C, at least one C belongs to open interval A to B for which F of C equals to L. Now I wrote here at least one C. That means there can be many C's correspond to this L. But according to this function, according to graph of the this, uh, according to the graph of this function, there exists only one c here in this case. But let's draw one more graph of some other function. This is a, b. Let's say this is f of a, f of b. This will be the starting point. This is the point. on the graph. Now let's say the graph of this function looks like this. Now this is a continuous function. So for this uh, example also these two conditions should hold for this to be true. So f is a continuous function on closed interval a to b. This is the closed interval a to b and this is a continuous curve and the second condition is L is a number which is strictly between f of a and f of b. Let's take this is a point L which is strictly between f of a and f of b. Then according to this theorem this must hold. That means there, exi as there exists at least one number c which belongs to the open interval a to b. So let c correspond to this L if there exists some point C. Now here you see here is the point 
where f of c equals to l here will be one point where f of c will be l and here is one point where f of c is l so in this case there are more than one c's for which the value of the function is l so f of let me write c1 c2 and c3 f of c1 is l f of c2 is l and f of c3 is l so if these two conditions are true then by intermediate value theorem there will exist at least one c and they can be many c's they can be infinite c's also let's see one more example this is x axis say this is y axis and if you know the graph of sin x it looks like this and this keeps on going it's 1 and this is minus 1 so sin x f of x equals to sin x now sin x is a continuous function and if I take some number between 1 and minus 1 because here minus 1 is let's say this is f of a and this is f of b so if I take a point between minus 1 and 1 let me take l equals to 0 because it's strictly between minus 1 and 1 then for this 0 there must exist at least 1 c but in this case f of c equals to 0 that means if sin c equals to 0 then c will be equal to n pi where n is equal to 0, 1, 2 and so on. That means there are multiple values of c's which are 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi and up to so on and okay let me write that n belongs to integers because there will be negative values as well so negative pi negative 2 pi negative 3 pi and so on so in this case there are infinite c's